and to truly add insult to injury. In 2020, Britney was 30 years old, and at 30, she voted for the first time ever in her life. And guess who she voted for? Before you go, have you heard from the White House since the letter was delivered to President Biden? In her letter, she says the first time she voted was in 2020, and that vote was for President Biden. Have you heard from him? I still have not heard from him, and honestly, um, it's very disheartening. On today's video, I just wanted to take a moment to shine some light on the Brittany Griner situation in Russia, where she's currently facing up to 10 years in prison on charges of, get this, large-scale transportation of drugs. Now, if you let Russian officials tell it, Griner touched down in Russia with all types of kilos and eight balls with the purpose of becoming Russia's next big queen pin. But in reality, she got caught with a couple of vape pens in her luggage at the airport, and the vape pens had hash oil in them. You know, real queen pin stuff. Now here's the thing, since she's been in prison in Russia, Biden and Harris have completely ignored Griner and her family. They refuse to get on the phone with the Griner family the same way they've ignored and have refused to get on the phone with Ice Cube about his contract with Black America. Now, this really shouldn't be much of a surprise because after Biden lied to Black Americans after winning the election by stating, especially those moments, and especially those moments when this campaign was at its lowest ebb, the African American community stood up again for me. You've always had my back, and I'll have yours. Since then, the only things that occurred under the Biden administration for black Americans as far as legislation is concerned was a bogus police reform executive order that only applied to federal law enforcement because apparently black Americans are having an issue with all these run ins with the Secret Service and the CIA and the FBI, as opposed to the NYPD and the LAPD. And oh yeah, let's not forget about the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act that was passed 50 years too late. Seriously, it's 2022 and Biden passed an anti-lynching bill. What's next? Is Biden going to pass the Anti-Slave Trading Act before the midterms? But you see... When it comes to the type of legislation that black Americans actually need, like concrete transformative legislation that will close the black white racial wealth gap or an anti-black hate crime bill to address the legacy of anti-black racist violence, like what we recently witnessed in Buffalo, New York. Let's not also forget about the fact that per the FBI data, black Americans literally are the most hated, victimized, brutalized and most discriminated against group of people in the United States. Once again, per the FBI data. So I say all that to say Biden and Harris ignoring the Griner family, refusing to get on the phone with them, isn't really outside of the scope of how they typically address the black community. But recently in a CBS Morning News interview, Brittany Griner's wife, Sherelle, opened up to Gail King about the letter that Brittany wrote from jail to Joe Biden, pleading with him not to forget about her. We welcome you back to CBS Mornings. As we reported earlier, WNBA superstar Brittany Griner has reached out directly to President Biden with a handwritten note asking him not to forget her while she's being held in Russia. Griner is scheduled to make another court appearance in a Moscow suburb on Thursday where Russian authorities claim that she had cannabis oil in her luggage. The U.S. says she's wrongfully detained. According to a representative, the basketball superstar tells President Biden in the letter, quote, as I sit here in a Russian prison alone with my thoughts and without the protection of my wife, my family, friends, Olympic jersey or any accomplishments, I'm terrified I might be here forever. Now, in an interview with Joy Reid last month, when asked what she feels the Biden administration can do better, Sherelle replied that the Biden administration can start by making their rhetoric match their actions. Biden's press secretary stated that getting Brittany Griner out of Russia is a top priority for the administration. But as I stated earlier, according to Griner's wife, their rhetoric is not matching their action. Given that's the position uh, that the Russian government is taking, what do you, th what, what in your mind can the U.S. do about that? Since, of course, we're on the opposite side of Russia uh, on what's going on in Ukraine, not clear what the diplomatic relationship is like. What do you believe that the Biden administration could do differently? 
So what I um, believe that the Biden administration can do differently is to actually, you know, take the words and the rhetoric, the rhetoric that they have and match them together. For example, an American that's deemed wrongfully detained, to my understanding, from what the State Department is saying, America will negotiate their release. It's not a maybe, it's a will. They will negotiate for their release. And so right now, my wife has been wrongfully detained. So despite whatever the Russian authorities are saying, despite whatever, you know, press conference they do to say anything about BG and the legal matter over there, America has already determined that she gets no justice in that system and that they will negotiate her release. And so my push is for the American administration right now, the Biden administration, to do exactly that, to make a deal for BG because she is wrongfully detained. Now, what I find very interesting is that originally the Biden administration wanted the Griner family to stay quiet so that everything can be handled behind the scenes. But after over 140 days, the family is breaking their silence. And in my opinion, it's for the better because the reality is that as long as the Griner family stays quiet, it gives the Biden administration more of an opportunity to drag their feet without any public pressure. Has there been a, stra a change in strategy on how you all are pushing the government for her release? Do you are there calculations yes. that you make yourself about what to say and how to say? What is that? What is your thinking? So that's a good question. So um, everything about this is a calculation for me because I have to walk the fine line of, you know, harm versus help when it comes mm. to my wife right now. So as much as I want to, you know, um, advocate for her and push for, you know, our government to do everything, you know, I also have to take into account that she's in a position where she could be harmed um, mm -hmm. also. Um, by any and everything I do. And so um, it's, a, it's a thin line to walk in initially. You know, I was told, you know, just we're going to try and reserve, you know, we're going to try and handle this behind scenes and, you know, let's not raise her value and, you know, stay quiet. And, you know, I did that. And, and, and respectfully, we're, we're over 140 days at this point. That does not work. And so I will not be quiet anymore. Um, I will find that balance of, you know, harm versus help in pushing our government to do everything that's possible because being quiet, they are not moving. They are not doing anything. And so, um, my wife is struggling and, and we have to help her. Now, to make a highly stressful situation even worse, the one time Sherelle Griner would have had an opportunity to actually speak with Brittany, this happened. WNBA star Brittany Griner, who has been detained in Russia since February for allegedly carrying hashish oil in her luggage, tried to call her wife, Sherelle Griner, nearly a dozen times through the American embassy in Russia, but they never connected because the phone line at the embassy was not staffed. This is according to Sherelle, who told the Associated Press that for two weeks, she had a phone call scheduled through the U.S. Embassy with her detained wife for their anniversary, which was last Saturday. Sherelle called the air unacceptable and said, quote, I have zero trust in our government right now. So Saturday would have been the first time that I've heard BG's voice since, um, yeah, um, February the 17th. She was only allowed to call the number given directly to the embassy, and they did not answer. I find it unacceptable on our embassy, on all the government personnel that keeps telling me that my wife is a priority. How could she be a priority when in the same breath that you're telling me that, you're also not even checking something as simple as the fact that we scheduled a call during a non-business day. It, it, it's ridiculous. Not being able to hear her voice real time, I have no understanding besides what people tell me um, is my wife's condition. That phone call was scheduled two weeks in advance. And when the day came, nobody was staffed that day to pick up the call to transfer the line over to Sherelle. What that tells you is that the Biden administration just doesn't care. Has the White House reached out to you um, has the State Department reached out to you? Have you been able to speak with someone in the administration um, about what you want to see done? 
So the answer to that question is kind of twofold. And so um, the White House has a lot of personnel working in there. And so I have been able to speak with Secretary Blinken um, inside of the White House. I have been able to speak with some persons from the SPIHA department. I'm sorry to interrupt, but what she's explaining here is the equivalent of you calling my home to speak to me, but I don't want to talk to you. My son doesn't even want to talk to you. So instead, we have you on the phone with my wife's cousin. Whatever you want to tell me, you tell him and I'll get back to you whenever I get a chance to. However, um, the person that has the power, you know, the Biden administration itself being President Biden, Vice President um, Harris, I have not spoken to them. I've asked, I've requested, you know, and at this point, it almost feels like, you know, they're indirectly telling me no, you know, it almost feels like indirectly they've told us as a family, they will not be with us, despite the fact that everybody is saying, when I do speak to people, um, PG is the top priority. We know she's wrongfully detained. We're doing everything. But um, the people that have the highest power, no, they have not spoken to me and my family. And to truly add insult to injury, in 2020, Brittany was 30 years old. And at 30, she voted for the first time ever in her life. And guess who she voted for? Before you go, have you heard from the White House since the letter was delivered to President Biden? In her letter, she says the first time she voted was in 2020, and that vote was for President Biden. Have you heard from him? I still have not heard from him, and honestly, um, it's very disheartening. This is truly sad, and I really hope that the Biden administration does the right thing because being locked up abroad is probably one of the scariest things that can happen to you. But then again, we are talking about Biden. He hasn't cared much about the black community since he's gotten into office, and I don't really see him changing his ways anytime soon, unfortunately. Again, we are talking about Crime Bill Joe. So with all that being said, that does it for today's video. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. All social media links will be pinned in the comment section below. Please make sure you text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That's TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That way you'll get a direct text notification whenever I release a new video, but it also serves as a protection plan for myself in case YouTube ever gives this channel the ax. I'll be able to send you a direct link to where you can find me next. And last but not least, for those of you who have a love and appreciation for the work that I put in on this channel, the number one way you can show your support is through Patreon. For only $3 a month, that will help put me in position to take TD Hip Hop Media off of YouTube. Remember, the goal is not to grow big on YouTube, but to grow independent of YouTube. And for those who have issues with joining Patreon, you could also hit the join button that's next to the subscribe button. And that way you can become an official channel member for as little as $3 a month as well. And lastly, if you have not already, please make sure you join the emailing list. There is no way that I can go independent of YouTube if I cannot take the audience with me. And the link to that will be pinned in the comment section as well. Thank you for your time. And until the next video, peace.